The world of prosthetics is an exciting place as new technologies constantly push the boundaries of what is achievable. This can be seen at Ottobock, one of the world's leading makers of prosthetics. These limbs are sold for tens of thousands of dollars and are extremely impressive. I got to try out some of their feet, including the new Challenger, a cross between a running blade and a walking foot, and one of the first double amputees to try it out. So before I had my legs amputated, I was a dancer, and about a year and a half ago, I started dancing again, and these feet feel as though they would give me so much movement to dance and so much kind of freedom to bounce in them and take much greater steps than I have been able to previously. These really are top of the range devices with prices to match. The Genium X3 Knee is estimated to cost $120,000. This was designed in partnership with the US military for soldiers to go back into active duty. This knee has a microprocessor control and sensor technology, so gyroscopes, accelerometers that are in the knee uh, to know how the individual is walking, what speeds they're walking at, what type of terrains they're walking on. This technology is uh, very innovative and high tech and depending on the insurance policies that the individual has, some individuals may not have access to this technology. Price is something a startup in neighbouring College Station is trying to address. They can't make computerised components, but are trying to design leg sockets using 3D printers. These 3D printed sockets are new for me, so I'm dying to find out more. There have been some early moves to make a 3D printed leg. Autodesk made this one for cyclist Denise Schindler at the Paralympics in Brazil. But the key element here is it is non-weight bearing. She doesn't have to walk far on it. Trifusion is developing materials that they hope will be strong enough for somebody to walk around on all day. They are using microwaves to heat their new materials and weld them together to try and combat the issue of breakages often seen in 3D printing. We use nanomaterials which have dimensions that are on the order of atoms. Uh, a carbon nanotube that we work with is one ten thousandth of the width of a human hair. And then we use electromagnetic energy we couple it to those nanomaterials, they heat up rapidly, and we can simultaneously weld hundreds of these layers together, and that basically fuses the part and makes it just as strong as if it had been injection molded or machined from a solid block of plastic. Trifusion is partnered with startup Ascentium, who have a factory where a leg socket can be 3D printed from scratch under one roof. Everything from creating a unique filament to scanning and printing the final design. And this is quite unusual, isn't it, for a company to actually have this in-house? For a company to have the capabilities of making the filament in-house as well as printing their own devices, uh, it's fairly rare. But they're missing a crucial element. There is no prosthetist on site, and the technology hasn't been FDA approved. We will see if that makes a difference. They're keen to try me out on two of their leg sockets. I'm quite the guinea pig. So is this the first time that you have scanned for a double amputee? It absolutely is. This is the very first double amputation uh, that we've ever scanned before, and uh, we're proud to have you as our first uh, case here. This oh, is awesome. thanks. Feeling confident? Yeah. The scanning itself was a great experience. I was impressed by how fast it was. In just a minute and a half, we had these incredibly detailed scans. I remember having my first Plaster of Paris cast done when I first came out of hospital, and I still had kind of necrotic tissue on my limbs because I had meningitis, so it was septicemia. And that was really traumatic for me. It was a very long process and quite painful. And when you have no idea of that process as well, it's really hard. And so this would be a lot simpler for people who are having it done for the first time. It could be quite a good entry point. The information is sent to the cloud where it can be shared with anyone, anywhere. And the first iteration of my legs were ready to be printed out for the next morning. Hello. Hi. Morning. How's Good it going? to see you. Good morning. These were printed. So we did the scanning yesterday. They were printed in seven and a half hours overnight, and now I'm holding it. It's amazing. Feeling a little bit nervous, but excited to try them out. But the floor was too slippy in the factory, so we went to the office where there was carpet. We realised there were problems early on. We had to do something of a botch job to keep them on, as you can see. It's 
much comfier than I thought it would be, considering yeah. it's the fit is actually very low, so my leg usually comes up right up above my knees. It's pretty impressive though. <laughs> oh, I think I just broke that. <laughs> I think that might be snapping. We've I broke it. Yeah, <laughs> it was a valiant effort, but my takeaway was the importance of having a prosthetist involved in the design. But it's clear there is a future for 3D printing in the field of prosthetics. It's quite strange getting new legs anyway, like any time that you get them, like standing on something and putting your whole body weight into it is quite a scary process. But to actually see it come from nothing yesterday, be printed overnight and then put your legs straight on it. So seeing that behind the scenes is a real insight.